I'm Clara Hughes, and I was an Olympic speed skater and cyclist for 23 years. I went to six different Olympic Games and earned six medals for Team Canada in long track speed skating and road cycling. Currently, I am not an Olympic athlete in practice, but I am a lifetime athlete. I love long distance hiking trails like the Pacific Crest Trail, the Appalachian Trail. I love ocean kayaking and, of course, riding my bike. I've had a few injuries and the interesting thing is they didn't really have anything to do with overuse or sport impact injuries as an Olympian. Um, they came in life after sport. The first injury was uh, tearing my ACL. I slipped, my leg got caught between literally a rock and a hard place and I fell with all my weight and blew my ACL. So it was complete ACL reconstructive surgery. The second surgeries I had were both at once. It was a root meniscal repair. I tore the meniscus completely out of the root. And, and then I had a high tibial osteotomy at the same time. And how I sustained this injury, the root meniscal repair, was the goofiest thing. I was dancing in the house. I was goofing around, trying to do the Red River jig. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. That's what we do from there. And I heard something pop and I thought, wow, did I just tear my meniscus? It was in the middle of the pandemic or the beginning of the pandemic. And I thought, oh, I, I don't think I did that. It'll get better. So I didn't do anything about it. I didn't go see a sports medicine doctor. I didn't go to any doctor. I just thought it would heal itself. About a year later, I was doing bar class via, you know, online, as many of us were doing through the pandemic, and I was doing an exercise, and I heard another pop, and my knee collapsed in, and at that point, I knew I had done something to my knee. I still didn't get it checked out. I didn't because I didn't want to burden the system because we were in the pandemic and I just thought it would just get better. Um, in this time, I did two long distance hikes. One was the Great Divide Trail, a thousand kilometer long hike on the Canadian Continental Divide. And the second was the Vancouver Island Trail, which was a 800 kilometer long hike, the length of Vancouver Island. So when I tore the root of the meniscus out, I had no functioning meniscus. I hiked a couple thousand kilometers as well as other adventures and really did damage to the cartilage in my knee. Dr. Mark Hurd, my wonder surgeon at Banff Sports Medicine, um, Dr. McIsaac first um, diagnosed it, Dr. Hurd confirmed it and had suggested the high tibial osteotomy to take the pressure off of the cartilage that I had damaged. And I damaged this cartilage by not taking action and not getting it checked out. And I still can't believe I did that, but I did it. And so it led to this really big second surgery. Rehab for these surgeries, the root meniscal repair and high tibial osteotomy, HTO, was very challenging. The first thing that was incredibly challenging is I had to remain non-weight bearing for six to eight weeks. So as a person who's really active, it was so hard to wrap my head around not being active, um, using crutches to get around the house. Um, going to initial physiotherapy in Canmore, but really just kind of having my leg up and doing minimal amounts of things, just getting range of motion back. Um, it was really hard not to get those, you know, endorphin rushes from exercising. And so I had to, you know, as well as committing to a very, very minimal physiotherapy routine so as not to re-injure myself and never to have to get these surgeries again because they were so hard. Um, I had to really reset my mind, not only just to think of like, kind of like, you know, the whole Olympic higher, faster, stronger. I had to be like the lower, the slower, the gentler, the very small, like moving a grain of sand instead of pushing a big mountain. I had to change my mindset and realize anything I could do was something. Any small thing I could do was something more than nothing. And um, also I had to just reset my expectations 
not only of getting through those first, what ended up being six weeks of non-weight bearing, but I had to reset my expectations of what came after. I had another surgery in the past with Dr. Hurd again, and it was a, a repair of a torn ACL. Seven months after that surgery, I hiked um, 1,700 miles on the Pacific Crest Trail. I walked the entire state of California seven months after that surgery. That was not going to happen with this surgery. And Dr. Hurd clearly made me and helped me understand that it was going to be quite a journey. And if I committed to this journey of rehabilitation, that I would hike again. But he said, if you go too soon, and he made me on the surgery table promise to not do a long distance hike within a year, to give it a year to heal. And I made that commitment. And it was a really challenging thing to know that I wasn't going to just go and do what I wanted in terms of physical activity anytime soon. So it took a reset of my expectations. And once I did that, I actually found that it helped me a lot because it allowed me to think smaller about everything. It allowed me to have a lot more patience with everything, um, but it was a challenge. One of the easy parts of rehab for me is I'm, you know, obviously a very goal oriented person being an Olympian. And I could see these little tiny bits of progress, you know, like I could bend my knee a little bit more from one week to the next. And then one morning, <laughs> I actually got out of bed to go to the washroom in the morning and I walked to the washroom without my crutches, without thinking about it. And I got to the washroom and I thought, oh my goodness, did I walk too soon? And I contacted Dr. Hurd and he said, no, it just means that you were ready. It means that your body was ready to walk. And this was just over six weeks after the surgery. So it was really cool. And what I found easy was I had all of these little benchmarks that I would reach and I could see that as even with the small improvements that I was improving. And that gave me a lot of motivation to keep going and keep committed to the healing path. My, my expectations um, post-surgery, Dr. Hurd did a really good job at clearly and clinically laying out how hard it was going to be and how this was very different from my ACL reconstructive surgery. He, he let me know in no uncertain terms that it was going to be one heck of a journey. But he also gave me the encouragement that if I committed to this, I could do it. And that there was a pot of gold at the end of the healing rainbow that I would hike again and I would ride my bike again. And he said, you know, and even this summer, he's like, you might not be doing these long hikes but you can kayak, you can do all of these different things. You can ride your bike. And so he helped me understand um, when the reality set in, which I have to admit, even with understanding, I still was like, but maybe I'll be the, the exceptional one. I'll be that, that, that outlier that just heals super fast. Um, I realized that there are all these things that I can do. And so it surprised me that as soon as I changed my mindset, I could find so much good and positivity in such a difficult circumstance. Um, and I'm grateful for that. I got really lucky in the timing of these surgeries in that it was February when I was rehabbing and it was exactly when the Winter Olympics were coming live all hours of the day and night and so I glued myself to the Olympics and I was so inspired and excited and encouraged and I swear I got endorphin rushes vicariously from the athletes <laughs> competing and so I just immersed myself in something that I find inspirational um, with my surgery a few years ago from the ACL reconstruction I read a book on a young woman hiker named Carrot Quinn um, hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And that planted the seed of, I'm going to hike the PCT after I'm healed from this. So really one of my strategies, even as an athlete, it was taking myself somewhere that was inspiring and being inspired by other people doing something special. 
And this helped get me through the really difficult days and many days where I felt like I can't do anything. I'm never going to be able to do anything. Immersing myself in someone else's journey of excellence allowed me to feel some kind of hope and happiness and something positive. And that was very helpful. Another strategy that I had after this, these difficult surgeries is I created a routine for myself. So I, you know, showered, I brushed my hair, I brushed my teeth, I ate well, some days I didn't eat well, and I wasn't worried about that or hard on myself. I just really gave myself a lot of love, a lot of patience, and I didn't set um, I didn't set these expectations that were unrealistic. I clearly understood physiologically, medically, what happened in the surgeries. Um, I knew what happened and how traumatizing it was for, you know, my hamstring tendon to be taken on my leg and made into my ACL and then put in there and drills and hammers and all this, you know, stuff that these fine surgical carpenters like Dr. Hurd do, <laughs> I actually understood the intensity and um, the extremities of these surgeries. And by understanding and getting the education on what these surgeries were really helped me understand and have patience with healing. So that was another strategy was just learning everything I could about what was going to be done to my leg. And understanding that helped me have a better strategy for having patients for the rehabilitation afterwards. In some ways, I think my experience as an Olympic athlete definitely helped me through my rehab journey. But in other ways, I think it made it a bit harder because as an athlete, you're you're in the center of all this support. You have access to physiotherapy, massage therapy, to all modalities of, of treatment and of healing. And as a non-athlete, you don't have access to those things. You have access to, after you run out of your Alberta Health, um, you know, eight sessions for the physio, which I'm really grateful for. Um, it's out of pocket if you don't have a workplace that covers it. So it's quite a different experience and um, not having the extrinsic motivation. I had injuries as an athlete, but you still show up for training. You still go to the gym, you go with your strength trainer and you have all these people like that are kind of keeping you accountable. And there's all that outside motivation to help you along as a like civilian person, athlete, <laughs> you don't have that. So in some ways I was like, oh, if I was an athlete, it'd be so much easier. Like every time I watched like an Olympian coming back from this accident or this surgery and look at them, they're competing. I'm like, yeah, but you had access to everything. <laughs> so in some ways remembering what that was made, broke my spirit a few times. Um, but it also gave me, you know, the reminder that I know how to get things done. And I'm an, an individual sport athlete. So I know how to get things done by myself. And, you know, also finding the right people, the very qualified people that are available, not just to athletes, but to all of us that are worth the money that are worth the money that you spend and the time that you give to have their guidance and support. Um, but ultimately, physiotherapy is up to you. And as an athlete, I was terrible at doing physiotherapy. So these surgeries definitely taught me the importance of doing the exercises. And then you don't actually have to pay anyone to do the exercises. You pay yourself by doing them. So yeah, it helped. But in other ways, it made me feel like kind of sorry for myself at times. <laughs> The resources that I used um, to understand these surgeries better were, first of all, talking to my surgeon, talking to Dr. Hurd, and, you know, sur like, he, Dr. Hurd's so passionate about what he does. Like, he's excited to, like, get your leg going again, but he's also excited to share and talk about what it is. So he explained everything to me, but beyond that, and everybody is different, so I'm not making this suggestion, but for me, 
it made most sense to do a spinal um, for the surgery. I did not have a general. And so I was awake and aware for the surgeries. I was able to watch on the screen what was being done in, inside of my leg. And then outside of that, I was able to hear what was happening to my leg in terms of this fine carpentry construction project of putting me back together. And so actually being awake and lucid for this helped me realize this is a big deal. This isn't just falling off my bike. This isn't just being bruised and battered. And I mean, I, I was a bike racer. I've had all sorts of bike crashes. This was different. So it helped me absorb the intensity and the enormity of these surgeries. Um, outside of that, just all of the resources that I was given from Bounce Sports Medicine, really reading them and, and then going online and researching, you know, utilizing what's available on the internet um, and, and understanding this is a big deal helped me so much. The surgeries I've had because of the injuries I've had to repair them have affected how I see myself in terms of what I can do. And if I can be honest, I'm, you know, I'm still right now probably 10 to 11 months post-op from the HTO and the root meniscal repair. And I still struggle with believing I will hike again. I'm taking the steps to get back there, but it's difficult and challenging to have the confidence to know that I'll be able to do, not all, um, I don't think I could speed skate again. That would be way too hard on my knees, but that's okay because I don't want to. But in terms of the things I really love, like being on a long trail for weeks or months on end, um, I struggle with believing that I'll be able to do that again. But in saying that, I just always remember what Dr. Hurd said to me. He said, you may just be doing it differently when you get back. You might just have to listen to your body a little bit more. You may have to take a day off from time to time. And he looked at me and he's like, those are all good things, right? And so I always remember that encouragement. And I remember, you know, being an Olympic athlete, it wasn't just about having an endless, you know, capacity to tap into day in and day out. Recovery was just as important. Listening to my body was just as important. Taking a day off was just as important as the hard work. So in some ways, the encouragement I've received from Dr. Hurd made me put myself back in the mind of, a, of an Olympian and realize it's all about balance. And so as much as I struggle with that, I'm starting to glean some hope in this mindset of realizing that I just have to be a little more careful with my body and not just push it all the time and take a day off and realize that you know, the places and spaces in between the, the output my body can give are probably some of the most beautiful moments I can experience anyway. So there's a lot of lessons in there as much as I am struggling with it still. I see the great capacity for learning and growing and ultimately being inspired in there. I am afraid of re-injuring my knee. <laughs> I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of getting having to get this surgery again. And I think that's totally normal. Um, I did have the opportunity a little while ago to have the hardware taken out. And I was given the option of taking the hardware out, the hardware being four way longer than I knew they were screws and a little plate that was in my tibia. And I was given the option because I could have left it in. I chose to have it taken out for a few reasons. One of them is if anything else happens to my knee, if I needed a knee replacement in the future, I'm 50 years old. You never know what can happen. I'm told I'll get at least 15 years out of this repair. So I'm counting on 15 years, but who knows after that? So take it out. It won't interfere with future. Hopefully not, but if there are surgeries, but secondly, I'm, I'm just, I, it was really cool for Dr. Hurd to go in and check it out, check out the job that he did. So I had the hardware removed and then he said he went in with the arthroscopic camera and it was really neat to not only see 
a perfect meniscus. And he was like, look at this beautiful thing. And he was like celebrating not only the work he did, but the meniscus. And he said, if I hadn't known that I had done a root meniscal repair, I would never have known that you had that procedure. So that was cool. Secondly, he checked out my ACL and he's like, look at this beautiful ACL. He said, the tendon we took from your hamstring, it has its own vascular system. And I could see this web of veins. He said, it's turned into a ligament. Isn't that beautiful? And so it was really cool because as afraid as I am of tearing my meniscus out again or wrecking my ACL to actually see tangible proof that they are in not just good shape, but great shape, um, gives me a lot of confidence and lessens the fear that I think, as I said, is really normal to re-injure yourself. And um, I'm afraid of that and I don't wanna do that. But seeing it gave me a little hope that maybe I can push a little more now. <sighs> How do I feel today? Like almost 11 months post-op. Today's a good day. Yesterday was a more challenging day. This has been a challenging time and not just with the physical recovery of this surgery. It's been challenging for me because I have been far less physically active than I've been in my entire adult life. I have been the least active since I was 16 years old this year, my 50th year. I turned 50 this year. That has been an incredible challenge and in all honesty, I didn't quite realize the impact that this was going to have on my mental health. I knew movement was an incredible outlet of medicine for me, for my not only physical well being, but mental well being. But I didn't quite fathom what it would be like to lose that outlet. And it's been a really hard year because of that. It's left me with the realization of how important it is to have these outlets, however big or small, and to allow yourself the outlet. Um, it's different for everyone. For me, it's movement. For others, it could be creativity. It could be music. It could be dance or song or drawing or, or anything, you know, anything that sparks that beautiful joy and allows some good endorphins to flow. I didn't realize how hard this whole year was going to be on me. And in hindsight, um, I realized I bit off a few things that were a little too big for me this year. I ended up having to leave a job because of a mental health crisis this past summer. And I left and I'm proud of myself that I took myself out of the working environment because I just didn't have the capacity to fulfill my role. And I realized afterwards, it's because it's been a really hard year. I didn't have my armor going into the space of work that I was going into that I usually do. I didn't have the resilience that I, I build through you know, activities like being physically active and um, just having movement as my medicine. And it, um, it made me realize how important and crucial that is. And I'm looking forward to, and I am right now, chipping away at getting back into an active lifestyle, building my resilience again. I know it will be back, but it's been a really, really tough year and a very interesting learning experience. I would like to add how grateful I am for the entire team at Banff Sports Medicine. Um, you've put me together a few times. You've taught me so much. You have not only brought me back to my physical self, but you've encouraged me along the way. And Dr. Hurd, Dr. McIsaac, everyone, Dr. Irving, everyone on the whole medical team at Banff Mineral Springs Hospital as well, I just want to say thank you. Um, you've really helped me in ways that you'll never know. And you're all superheroes to me, including you, Marta. I just, I really appreciate everyone so much, um, your kindness and caring and how it's, oh, it's so clear that you just want to get people moving again. 
You want to get them back to doing what they love. You really, really understand that. Dr. Hurd, you will always be a champion athlete with the heart of a champion. And you've kind of given me the fuel back in my own heart to get back to movement. And I'm grateful.